Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have something incredibly cool to check out, because right when you think that the Collect Day 2023 line has ended, we actually still have another new figure from Collect Day, however, this one isn't quite as readily available as the others, because this is actually an exclusive figure to the Melbourne Museum in Australia. Now this is obviously a repaint of the Triceratops that was released a little ways back, and honestly, if you ask me, it is unquestionably the better version of the two. The coloration of this is just beautiful. Like, the moment I had seen these images, I fell in love with this Triceratops. I really loved the original one. I loved the sculpt, and I even did love the paint job. But the paint job of this one is just so much nicer, if you ask me. So, I pretty much was dead set on getting a hold of this at some point. And after conversing with the Melbourne Museum, they have actually made it possible for international customers to get a hold of this. And that was definitely a worry for many people. A lot of people thought that there was, you know, a chance they'd have to miss it because it's not possible to get it here in the United States. Well, it now is. And uh, I will include the information in the description of the video as to where you can go to contact the Melbourne Museum and get a hold of this incredible release. But as you can see again, it's the same sculpt as the previous version, except now we have a nice, beautiful looking new paint scheme for it. And we also have a little tag here on the leg, as well as one of those classic Collect Day human figures here, which you can again see inspired by the Triceratops at the Melbourne Museum. You can also see it is in 1 40th scale. And uh, pretty cool just to have this tag again as an exclusive tag. And you can again see that it states that it is inspired by a fossil specimen in the collection of Museums Victoria, and it is displayed in the Melbourne Museum. And it is actually one of the most complete Triceratops skeletons ever found. And then you have information on the species over here, and then basic information here on the back. So pretty cool just to have that tag, but we're actually going to remove this stuff here. I probably should have removed it just to show you guys the tag. It would have made a little more sense, but I'll give you guys another quick view of it right there. And uh, again, our little classic Collect A human figure that comes with it. But the Triceratops, again, it's a really, really nice sculpt. But this new paint job really amps up the overall beauty of this particular version. So let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at it right now. So like I had stated, the sculpt is exactly the same. Now we have reviewed the sculpt of the original Triceratops, so we don't need to review the sculpt again. We basically just need to take a look at anything that differentiates this from the initial release, and that of course is the flashy and beautiful new coloration of this Triceratops. So straight away, one of the most striking features I would say of this Triceratops is the really nice striping that we have going on. You can see all of the horns are painted with a nice blackish tone and they all have this striping going on and you can see it even takes place here in the beak and you can see just how much that really makes the overall appearance of the Triceratops just stand out and pop. I really love that. Not something that you know, previously I would have considered to look so good on a Triceratops model, but it really does. Definitely a fantastic color choice as far as this version goes. And the fact that the stripes are such a light tone, and then of course the black being such a dark tone, really makes the two colorations play off of each other in the best way possible. And then as you move down, you can see we have a darker tone kind of run here along the front of the snout leading into the beak, and it also runs up along the top of the head. But you also have some variations of darker browns you can see appearing here and there, and even a lighter brown here running along the lower jaw. As you move back into the eye socket area, you can see a nice yellowish tone. And as the yellowish tone leaves the eye socket area, it stripes out and designs up into the frill. And you can see it transition to a variation of like an off-white. And we continue to have those really nice variations of browns moving all throughout the frill. And you can see how they really smoothly transition back and forth as you have varying tones of that brown. Similar to what we see here, again, with the darker tones running along here. You have the somewhat lighter tones, but still pretty dark here. And you can see that as you move through the frill and uh, allow the light to hit it, you might be able to pick up on how nice and how smooth the color variation and transitions are. And also, again, that designing really makes the frill stand out, just makes it have that nice flashy appearance you would like to see on the frill of a Triceratops. You can also see the spikes leading along the frill here are also painted with a nice glossy black, so they stand out very nicely. And the eye itself is painted with a black, also sports a nice gloss coat, and looks as genuine, lifelike, and realistic as it probably could get. As you move back here a little further into the body, actually, if you 
and move down here into the neck, you could see this nice light tone. Also mixing and meshing with the various browns of the figure, but you could see some black picking up. We have like a black spotting here leading down the leg, and you can see the leg transitions to a darker tone of brown as you lead down into the foot. The nails are painted with a nice black as well. And then as you lead back up, you see a yellowish tone here in the stomach region. And I love this area because you have that nice yellow that really stands out. You also have some more of the blacks there. But you have the nice yellow that stands out. And then it kind of stripes up almost in like a flame-like fashion up into the stomach. And that, you know, right there just really makes it super flashy as far as the coloration. But again, in a really nice naturalistic way, I would say. And then as you lead up here toward the back, you can again see variations of browns. And they've done a very good job of applying the browns in a really smooth and natural way. Again, we have darker tones up here that transition super, super nicely to a lighter tone moving down. You can see more of that yellow leading in here and striping and designing in from the rear of the thigh. And you can see that also leads up here into the tail as well. You can even see some darker shading here in the back of the knee. And again, the same thing as far as the coloration goes. As we lead into the foot, we have a slightly darker shade, but not all that much darker. Again, the nails are painted with a nice glossy black. And then as we move up into the tail, you can see the quills hanging off the top of the tail here, the back uh, running along the spinal column down into the tail are also painted with that darker brown. And I like, you can see right here, I like how you can see the uh, darker browns, yet you can still see the lighter browns kind of creeping through the scales, really helping to make those stand out. And right there, again, is a very nice, very prime example of how smooth the transitions are on the colors of this Triceratops. And another thing you might notice is actually there's a very light dry brushing with a grayish tone here on the top of the back. I did pick up on that as well. And then here on the underside, you have an even lighter yellow. You can see this yellow is a bit more vibrant compared to what we have on the underside. Much lighter yellow down here on the underside of the figure. You can also see that they have painted the cloaca out with a darker tone just to give it a little bit of color difference like Collecte usually does. And then over here on the opposing side, you can basically get an idea of the fact that, of course, it looks pretty much just as beautiful as it did on the initial side. Really nice, really precise paintwork, no sloppiness that I'm picking up on at all. And again, just as striking, equally I would say as striking as what we had just seen on the initial side. I am just a massive, massive fan of the color scheme of this Triceratops. It is so nice to look at. You can also see a lighter brown there for the back of the frill, but it is so nice to look at, so flashy, but again, in my opinion, so naturalistic. And then as you move up here, you can see we do have an articulated jaw, just like we had on the original one. And you can see again that we have a pinkish tone there for the tongue. You can also see the teeth painted there on the inside of the mouth and everything. So no missing anything as far as the paintwork goes on this beautiful Triceratops. So definitely a really cool release. I'm incredibly excited to now have this version here, the newer version of this Triceratops from Collect A, and in my opinion, the superior version. Definitely a really, really nice brand new paint scheme for this gorgeous Triceratops. Another thing that's really cool is if you actually go on the shop and you, you know, shop around a little bit on the Melbourne Museum's shop, you can actually find we move the Triceratops and move the camera up a little bit. You can see we can find this awesome book on there, which is obviously all about Triceratops. And uh, you can notice one thing straight away. It has that same color scheme that we see on the Triceratops model itself. And again, it looks just as awesome here on the version on this book as it does on the Triceratops figure itself. But this is a phenomenal book. Like I was recently looking through it, I haven't had a chance to fully study the entire thing and read it all, but man, does it ever look good. It is absolutely filled with all kinds of amazing information and all kinds of amazing images that I cannot wait to really dive into this. Again, this has just arrived, so I haven't really had a chance to fully check the book out, but again, you can see all kinds of amazing images, all kinds of awesomeness throughout the course of this book. Some of the nicest paleo art I think I've ever seen. That's a really cool color scheme, actually. But uh, definitely something, you know, worth looking into if you happen to check out the museum shop on the Melbourne Museum's website and you are interested in this book as well. Again, I am beyond excited to dive into this very soon. A really cool book visually, but I can't wait to actually read it as well. And uh, this as well, again, is available on the shop from the Melbourne Museum. And I also have this here, which you can see if we get nice and close, you can 
take a moment there to kind of read basically what this is. It's the Dinosaur Walk Collection, and you can see it's inspired by the famed Dinosaur Walk Gallery in the Melbourne Museum, a set of two notebooks featuring two key skeletons, and uh, definitely something that I thought was really cool, something I'm also really excited to have here in my collection. I love that you can kind of see the skeletal reconstruction there in the background on the you know, cover of the Deinonychus, and you can get a good look here at what the back looks like. These are still sealed. I haven't quite opened these quite yet, but I'm definitely excited to have those here as well. So again, I just wanted to show you guys that stuff. Again, some more awesomeness that is available on the website, the shop for the Melbourne Museum. Now, I don't think we really need to do a whole lot of size comparisons or anything with this because we have already done that with the initial review, but we will, of course, give it a size in general for a length. You were looking at about a little over maybe 11 and a half inches or around 29, closing in on 29 and a half centimeters. And then for a height to the top of the horn, just shy of five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. But for a size comparison that I definitely want to see, there is the original version of the Collect Day Triceratops next to the Melbourne Museum exclusive version. So straight away you can see how cool the original version looked, but you can also see so much better how the newer one looks. It looks amazing in comparison. And again, even though I really was a big fan of the original one, I think the newer paint application based on the Melbourne Museum version is just so much nicer, so much more appealing, and also a lot more natural, if you ask me. They also make really cool companion pieces. Like, you could probably intertwine these horns and uh, make it look like they're dueling or something like that. Definitely, again, a great piece to pick up if you are a fan of the original, or if you don't even have the original quite yet, then I would definitely recommend grabbing this newer Melbourne Museum exclusive version. And just in case you wanted to see another angle of the two together, again, here they are facing the same direction, again, looking absolutely epic together. So this brand new Melbourne Museum exclusive 140th scale Triceratops from Collect A is an absolute win, if you ask me. Again, I was beyond excited when I had found out that they were releasing this there. A little worried because I wasn't sure how readily available it would be here in the United States, but excited nonetheless, and uh, having it actually now here in my hands, first of all, is a huge sigh of relief because I don't have to worry about not getting a hold of it anymore, but also it is just such a treat for the eyes like the colors that were chosen for this triceratops are fantastic the overall design is also fantastic they've done a great job of keeping it where it looks like it could be a really nice naturalistic color scheme for a triceratops but adding in the best possible way of flashiness like the stripes on the horns and the beak they look so cool the design up in the frill also looks really cool and just those two areas and when the fact that we have such dark tones up there and then the stripes and the designing and everything are such lighter tones they really play off of each other perfectly up there in the face and that doesn't cease as you move through the course of the body again you have those really really nice appealing variations of browns and those gorgeous yellows coming up from the underside we also have a lot of the osteoderms and stuff through the course of the model painted out with a blackish tone just to add a little bit more color variation to it and uh, again all of the transitions back and forth are really smooth between the colors they've done a great job of applying some of like the lighter browns underneath the darker browns so they kind of shine through and they've also dry brushed some areas out with a light gray just to highlight the detail even further on top of that the sculpt in general is extremely nicely done like Collect Day knocked this out of the park when they sculpted this Triceratops. Of course, all of the fine detail you would expect to see is present on this. Lots of variation, actually, in the scale detail. And you can also see all the skin folds and skin wrinkles and everything you would expect to see. And the detailing is super crisp on the model. Like, it is an extremely high-quality model. You also have the articulated jaw, which is fun. It's always cool to have the option to kind of switch up the pose slightly at the very least the positioning of the body as a whole is also really nice it doesn't look like it's you know too worried or anything it just looks like a nice casual walking along triceratops although you could of course position it in a way where like you could create a diorama with the other triceratops where it's dueling or you can also kind of create a diorama with a t-rex if you happen to have one in the same size range that you know they could be facing off and the positioning of the body works well for any of those 
options but as a whole this is definitely a great release from not only collect a but also the melbourne museum in australia so if you are interested in picking this up i will include a link in the description to the shop of the melbourne museum where of course anyone in australia can just pick it up at their leisure but if you are an international customer i will also include the link in the description to where you can contact the melbourne museum and uh museums victoria to inquire about purchasing one for yourself so you can get a hold of this amazing triceratops as well so make sure you check those links go grab this awesome triceratops and make sure you like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching